Let's pray. Lord, those are spectacular words. To those who received him, who believed on his name, he gave the right, the authority to become children of the creator of the universe. Who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of any man, but born of God. Spectacular words. To be a child of God. There is nothing greater than to be an heir of all that God is and has. To have God as our Father. There's nothing greater. So God, come. We want to get this right. We don't want to mess up when it comes to understanding these two verses in John 1. So help us. We want to understand what it is to be born of God and how it relates to receiving Christ and believing on His name. We want to understand how the Word of God, which awakens faith, works. So come, help us. And while we work on this, do this work. Do it at the downtown campus. Do it at the south site. And do it here right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I was listening to a lecture by Vishal Mangalwadi called From Bach to Cobain. A lecture that he gave at the University of Minnesota last fall in a series of messages entitled Must the Sun Set? on the West. So I'm three messages into it and finding it most provocative and helpful. I recommend it to you. In that talk, he mentioned briefly the reality of this thing called mantra. The mantra in Eastern religions. And as I listened to him describe what it is and how it functions, I thought, i got to talk about that in relationship to the new birth. Because everything hangs on how we understand and then apply the biblical teaching that it is through word that we are born again. Do we understand it as mantra or gospel? And what's the difference? So let's try to make a connection between last week's focus from 1 Peter 1.23 to this week's focus in John 1, verses 12 and 13. They're very similar verses when you think about them. I'm amazed how many religious websites, not Christian websites, just religious websites, link mantra with John 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Brought in as a support for the understanding of mantra. And the essence of it is that Ultimate reality resides in sound, sacred sound. And the way you come to transcend your earthly existence and participate in the divine is to take sacred sounds upon your lips and by means of their repetition 
empty your mind and become unified with that ultimate sound, the Word. That's the way they understand or expropriate John 1, 1. One site, website, explains mantra like this, quote, Just by repeating the name, that which cannot be understood will be understood, and that which, and just by repeating the name, that which cannot be seen will be seen. Close quote. So in other words, the way a mantra works is not by clarifying the meaning of words and showing how the meaning of words corresponds to ultimate reality. Rather, a mantra works by being a combination of verbal sounds without verbal meaning. The aim of a mantra is not to to make ideas clear, but to make ideas vanish. So that by a more immediate route, you may commune with ultimate reality. Now, you need to know where you stand on that. How you think about that use of words and sounds and repetition, especially as it relates to salvation and the new birth. Many Christians with very weak roots in Scripture don't know what they believe about mantra and other aspects of Eastern religion and how God relates to them, how the mind relates to God through word, and they drift into practices of Eastern religions without any sense that they might be drifting away from Christ. 1 Peter 1.23, I'm going to draw you from last week to this week. 1 Peter 1.23 says, Having been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the miracle of renewal and newness and life from the dead comes through the living and abiding Word of God. How do you conceive of that happening? This is stupendously important. We are born again, united by the Spirit to the living Christ who is our life. We are born again through the Word of God. This miracle by which we become children of the living God and live forever with Him and escape condemnation, this miracle happens through the Word of God, it says in 1 Peter 1.23. So you need to decide whether that's a reference to the use of the Word of God as a mantra or the use of the Word of God as a mentally intelligible narration of historical events concerning Jesus Christ crucified and risen for our sins. This is really big. We take some things so for granted we don't realize how really strange they are in the world. And not realizing how distinct The Bible view is of how you get born again through the Word, not realizing how distinct it is in how the mind and word and understanding relate to the miracle, we can be easily drawn into some 